Good morning, grade three, four, and five class. Welcome to our music class today. It would be May 7th that uh, we would normally have this class on. I hope that you are still learning lots at home, and I hope that you're going to the the homepage of DCA and listening often to Cooperation Hop because I really hope at some point we'll be able to get back together and it'd be nice if we had that really well learned. Today we're going to take that music a little bit further with our ukuleles which you should be able to play while the video is playing and they should match. We were playing them in the same key ourselves which is why we have that crazy E chord because I wanted it to match the video, okay? Um, what you'll need today is something for rhythm for our pilgrim story. So clap, tap, whatever you have. Um, you also need a pencil uh, for our pilgrim's progress story. Um, I hope you have your worksheet that we last worked on um, and it's all completed. So you'll need those items. So if you need those, run quickly and get them. And while you're doing that, I'm just going to pull up our worksheet from last week and we'll do a little bit of review of what we were working on. So last week I would have had you a really easy worksheet and all I simply wanted you to do was to draw a whole bunch of natural signs. Remember natural signs, the same as sharps and flats, the peephole, that part of it is that need, needs to sit in the line or the space of the note that it's effective. So it's a line note, say it was through the first line of the treble clef, the E line, then this would need the peephole to show right through on that E line. So I hope you drew a bunch of those. They're really pretty easy. Uh, they're almost like a, um, a rectangle, just slightly, you know, tilted on its side. Okay, and remember what it does is it takes a note and resumes it or takes it back to its original uh, form. Okay, it erases it's like a big eraser of a sharp or flat. Okay, now this week you're going to find in your package uh, a word search. Hope you like word search. Um, what this word search has is all these different instruments within there. So that's the first thing I want you to do. Then after you've completed finding all these instruments in there, I want you to then categorize them. Remember we talked about the three families of instruments. We talked about wind instruments, and then we had the string family of instruments, and then we had the percussion family. So then I would like you, either you could say yellow for all the wind instruments, highlight all of these in yellow, or you can simply make, you know, columns of them, okay? So for instance, if we were looking for a wind instrument and you look through here, well, I could tell you right off the bat, let's find one of them. A recorder would be considered a wind instrument. Um, if we needed to find a string instrument, then I could say, well, let's let's talk about the piano. The piano, actually, if you look at an acoustic piano, that means not electric, not plugged in. If you looked at it and it had strings, it's a piano as uh, a string instrument because the strings vibrate to create the sound. And then find out the instruments here that are considered percussion instruments. So for instance, well, an easy one, the drum would be in the percussion family. So, you know, put each of those in their family grouping. So that's what I want you to work on this week. And we'll talk a little bit about that together next week. Now, I'd like you to take your ukulele. We've got our ukulele here. And let's just remember how we tune the strings, okay? So we have the strings. All right, hopefully you can see that. Here, maybe I'll just hold that up like that. Now, this is the treble clef. Okay, so the, the top string, string number four, this isn't the lines we're talking about. We're talking about the strings on our instrument is a G. My dog has fleas, G, middle C, E, A, line note, line note, line note, space, okay? So let's, if you have your instrument there, we'll see about tuning that right now together. All right, so the top string, that's the G. Dog has fleas. And remember to play right on top of your sound hole here, okay? Because that's where you create the best sound. Uh, let's start a little bit of our cooperation hop, and I'll add a little bit more to it this week, okay? So remember we started, and I'll move this down a little bit. Hopefully you'll be able to see what I'm doing, okay? And we'll start with the A chord, okay? So... Remember the A chord? Do, do, 
and then we went to the F sharp minor chord. That's where we dropped that finger there, okay? You have your book, remember? You have these, this sheet, okay? And then the top here, which I just have clipped in, is that one additional chord. So if you've got those, you've got the majority of the codes, uh, the chords that we'll need for this song, okay? So it's do, do, wop, do the, and then we go to the D, which is the three stacked, cooperation, and then the cheater E. I want you to know the actual E does this, okay? But that's a little tricky because you have to reach all the way. So for now, since we're relatively new and we haven't had a lot of time together, I'm just letting you do the cheater E, okay? Okay? Once you start, you never want to stop. Jump right in, don't be left out. Because friends helping friends is... This is what we did last week, the D. Friends helping friends is... Remember how we did that? What it's so Now, for the next part, we're going to lift finger number dooby dooby. So we got shooby dooby dooby dooby. And then the D dooby doo wop. Do the coco operation hop. Okay? So let's just do that. Shooby dooby 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 doo wop. Okay? So you have the A. Shooby It's, you have the A, lift finger number two, D, lift finger number two again, okay? So that's what I want you to work on this week. So, shooby dooby 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 doo wop. All right, and then next week we'll finish it off with the rest of that, okay? So work away on that, have some fun with that, and make sure that you're singing along because that's what makes it the most interesting to do when you're able to sing along with it okay now what I need you to do is to grab your pencil now and we're going to talk a little bit about filling in this sheet with the different rhythms so language is full of rhythms and our words okay so it's fairly easy to take words that we already know and to put them to rhythms. So these are the words that we've done so far, and I'm going to add one more word today. So if you can take your sheet here, and you'll have Celestial City, you'd put Celest Celestial City. So eighth note, half note, eighth note, okay? And then we have this, the City of Destruction, okay? Which is at the top one here. City of Destruction. Pilgrim, which we are going to begin now to call him Christian, is two beats. Pilgrim, Christian. Remember, he ran into Evangelist, who told him how he could get to the celestial city. But he had this burden on the journey that would make it too difficult, and he needed to have this burden taken away. And he could do that by going through the gate of decision, and asking the good king's son, Jesus, to take away his burden, to take away his sin. And when he was about to go to the gate of decision and knock on the door, remember a hand grabbed him and Mr. Goodwill, so you'd fill that in here, Mr. Goodwill, and put him right beside here, grabbed him and brought him to safety. So today we're going to add in palace beautiful. So you're going to take the word palace beautiful and you're going beside it, right? Quarter note, quarter note, eighth note, quarter note. Palace, beautiful. Okay? So as I'm telling the story, you can fill this in because you're going to see this here as you're listening to the story. Or you can grab your rhythm instrument or whatever you have and use that uh, as we go through it. Remembering that we're using half notes, quarter notes, 
eighth notes. Now we haven't had any whole notes, which are the four beat note, the open note without a stem. They look like an egg. And we haven't done any dotted half notes. So it would look like this with the dot that's worth three beats. So we haven't used all the notes that we have talked about in this. But as you can see, language is all about rhythm, just like music is all about rhythm. I'll grab my story here and we'll pick up where we left off. So Mr. Goodwill had shared with Pilgrim about how he could have his burden gone. And Pilgrim was feeling so weighted down by it and wanted so desperately to get rid of it. So as they read through the Bible, Mr. Goodwill shared with him how Jesus died on the cross. The good king's son died on the cross, but he was absolutely perfect. He had done nothing wrong so he did not die because of his sin. He had died because of the sin of people like Pilgrim. And when Pilgrim finally understood that and recognized and realized the incredible sacrifice gift the good king's son Jesus had done for him, he was weeping and he was so, so very sad for what he had done and he was repentant. And at that moment, when he knelt before the cross and said, Oh, forgive me, I am truly sorry for my sin. All of a sudden, his burden let go. It fell away and it tumbled down, down, down a hill, never to be seen again. And when Pilgrim stood up and looked at Mr. Goodwill, he felt light. He had not felt this light in his whole life. He could never remember feeling so good. He had his burden taken away. He thought, I could run all the way from here to the celestial city. I don't need to stop. But Mr. Goodwin, Goodwill said, well, well, hold on, Christian. And that's what I'm going to call you from now on, Christian. You were a pilgrim on a journey to the celestial city. But you have had your burden removed. So now you're a Christian pilgrim. Christian you do need to understand that this journey that you're going to take to the celestial city is long for some, but it is very short for others. But you need to be prepared. There are certain things that you need to have along this journey. And you see over there in the hill, that's not the celestial city. That's the palace beautiful and I want you to stop there this evening. If you go now, you can get there before dark. And I want you to stop there because they have something very, very important for you to receive. You must stop there. Oh, Christian Pilgrim was like, what? But why do I have to stop? I just, I just want to get there. Mr. Goodwill reminded him, you need to take the journey in the proper way. So stop at the Palace Beautiful. And so Pilgrim began running and he ran so fast because he had no longer any burden to carry that he was at the palace beautiful very quickly. It was long before nighttime and he stood there looking at it and he heard the most wonderful music that he had ever heard coming from inside the palace beautiful. And he stopped and he listened and he enjoyed it. And then he looked and thought, you know what? There's still a lot of daylight. I bet you I can make a whole lot further on my journey. Maybe I don't need to stop. I mean, uh, what, what could be possibly so important that I needed to stop at the palace beautiful for it? Maybe I could get there on my own. And so he stood there looking. Should I go or should I stay? I could get to the celestial city a whole lot faster if I just carried on my merry way. But the words of Mr. Goodwill rang in his ear. There are things you need for the journey. Next time we get together, we'll find out what sort of decision Christian Pilgrim comes to. And if he decides to stop or if he just continues on his way. Enjoy the rest of your week and we'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.